Well, it's that time of year again. When we take a look at the calendar, it was New Year's, and we blinked, and it's now Christmas. And that also means we get to take a look back on another year in K-pop. There have been births of monster rookies, mysterious disbandments, and really some unforgettable moments. So let me ask you a question: What will you remember 2021 for? <laughs> Time has literally been non-existent for the past two years, thanks to this little guy. To be honest, most of the time I don't even know what day it is. But what I do know is K-pop bounced back in a big way, and I think we can all agree that we got the new groups to thank for that. 2021 might be remembered by the rise and domination of new groups in K-pop. Most notably, Ive with a monster debut and snatching the fastest first win for a girl group in K-pop history. But now let's take a look at the beginning of 2021. The year was kicked off with a bombshell of GOT7 leaving JYP Entertainment. GOT7 didn't disband, but they decided not to renew with JYP. Believe it or not, IDOL did have a comeback this year. It was just at the beginning of the year in January with Quap. And yes, that was the last one before Sujin had to leave because Cube doesn't know what to do with their idols if anyone says anything about them. But the good news is the rest of the members of Idol are in Korea and plans about having a comeback soon. IU, of course, the queen of Korea herself, had comebacks with Celebrity and... with her new P Nation swag released the hit song I'm Not Cool and also spawned whatever this dance was I'm not cool. I'm not cool. in February well I, 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 I think probably the biggest story is the bullying apocalypse that happened in K-pop Left and right, a bunch of K-pop idols were being accused of bullies back in their school years. Including the first accusations against Sujin of Idol and Mingyu of Seventeen. Afterwards, more than 10 idols have been named for the alleged history of school violence. Most of them were fabricated and not true, but it definitely took a toll on a lot of groups. It also comes at a horrible time when groups can't even do much because of the pandemic. Chungo returned, but this time on our bicycle. Shiny also continuing on with Don't Call Me. And you know what? I'm happy every single time Shiny comes back because they give me the excuse to say, Shiny's back. Hunmi <laughs> being the icon that she is, released Tail, and then you can't sit with us later on in the year. But probably the highlight of February, and in fact, the whole year like this is probably one that goes down in k-pop history brave girls miracle comeback with roland it was february going into march when this video was uploaded the channel editor simply just compiled comments when brave girls was promoting rolling specifically at this stage for military men in the korean army that video went viral in korea with the hilarious comments and of course the fanboys of the korean army And because of that, Brave Girls was able to promote again with Roland as it climbed up the charts, getting their first ever career first place win on a music show. Brave Girls, 축하드립니다. <웃음> 네, 소감 한 말씀 부탁드릴게요. 이상, 이상. Now I know it's insane to say, but the song of the year in 2021 was Roland, which came out in 2017. In no other year in K-pop has that happened, like, the song of the year was released years ago. Oh, are you wondering how I'm able to see Korean YouTube and check out what's popping over there? Or Korean Netflix to see the top shows people are watching? Well, that's thanks to today's sponsor, NordVPN. NordVPN literally takes your internet to the next level. 
I know it's an old meme, but you know, we, we stand Espo around here. If you're like me who heard these three letters VPN without actually knowing what it is, to put it simply, a VPN encrypts your data and protects your privacy on the internet no matter where you are. So when you're researching for YouTube videos like me, you can breathe easy knowing your data is secure. And probably the dopest thing about NordVPN is you can basically travel the world without ever leaving your couch. With just a couple clicks, you can change your IP address to a different country and watch content exclusive only to that country, like South Korea for example. I can see it was popular over there before it even reaches the US. And you can link up to 6 devices to your NordVPN account, so you are 100% covered 100% of the time. That also means if you're on the go, like me, traveling to see TWICE for their upcoming tour. <laughs> you know, I got VIP baby, you know what it is. My internet traffic will be safe even when using public Wi-Fi. From people who are snooping around and want to see my plans for my giant Taehyun cutout to get their attention at the concert. That's top secret. NordVPN is perfect for everything you do online. And as a special holiday treat, NordVPN is running a holiday season deal. Go to nordvpn.com slash internetsnathan to get a two year plan plus one additional month with a huge discount. Link is also in the description. So go to nordvpn.com slash internetsnathan or hit the link in the description and use the code internetsnathan to get NordVPN for yourself. Thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring and now back to the video. Moving into March, everything looked great. K-pop was smooth sailing. Except some of you might have noticed, uh, K-pop songs disappeared from Spotify. Now, international K-pop fans were bewildered last week when K-pop songs by artists like IU and Zico vanished from the number one global streaming platform, Spotify. Thousands of songs disappeared from people's playlists. It literally came out of the blue unless you were actually in the music industry because Kakao Entertainment, who have the rights to these K-pop songs, didn't reach an agreement to Spotify for licensing the songs or an extension of it. And gladly it came back before we were graced by Rose's having a solo? Yes, YG is keeping their promise with Blackpink solo releases. This time, it was Rose's turn with On The Ground. A group that I've actually fallen in love with over the year is Weekly. They came back with After School and they continue to build on their fantastic debut year. Jesse continued to shake up the K-pop world with releases What Type of X and Cold Blooded, which featured some faces on a huge show that took Korea by storm. Yes, yes, of course, we're talking about Street Woman Fighter. And to be honest, like I gotta give credit to Emna here for giving a chance to like dancers and, and putting a spotlight on them. April was kind of a quiet month. I mean, you know, had a few releases here and there, and then you had Stacy. ASAP! Okay, sometimes I say it, sometimes I say it, I have to admit. And it's one of those names that I said before are a new group in K-pop that, yo, the sky's the limit with them. Yeah, and then the rest of April was kind of, kind of quiet, except Itzy! I'm the mafia. Mafia in the morning. Now, okay, yes, a lot of people had a little bit of a question mark above their heads when they listened to it the first time, and uh, of course, when they found out that JYP produced it, but didn't it grow on you? To be honest, be honest. And then in September, they released Loco. And promoted other B-sides in that album. Seriously, Itzy went on a tear this year. If you ask whose year it was, it, it would be a, a number of groups, but Itzy's name better be in the conversation. Oh, man, I don't know about you, but I'm I'm getting a little hungry. Maybe maybe I'm in the mood for like um, you know some chicken nuggets with um some kind of sauce that's available for a limited time only. Oh, you're thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah, we're here for the BTS. McDonald's made one of the best decisions in their company's history, collaborating with BTS on the BTS meal. And the next group that I'm talking about had a lot of eyes on them, including mine, because they released one of the songs of the year contenders, in my opinion, last year. Did they live up to expectations with their comeback this year? And a song that was actually in the original soundtrack for the latest Fast and the Furious, Espa released their own version. I'm on the next level, job. no more yet, moon or your next level. Everyone was doing the hand motion, everyone was saying it like winter, I'm on the next 
level. Hey, what do you think about a Vin Diesel? God, I love her. Look how beautiful she is. Hey, yo, chill. And then Espa put the pedal to the metal with the next release, Savage. Give me, give me now. Give me, give me now. Like seriously, it can be Espa's year this year too. Everglow continued with the quality with First and Pirate. And I, I think that's about it for May and July. Oh wait, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think I remember. They don't need my permission. Go ahead. And as the temperature rose, yes, it was summertime. In June, we had a mini heart attack with articles that said Huyen from Mamamoo did not re-sign with RBW Entertainment, yet the other members did. But if you read a little bit further, it said that Mamamoo will continue as a full group. And in fact, they did with the recent release. Bam Bam made a return in Korea, this time solo with the song Ribbon. And it completely took off. Bam Bam knows the trends. He is the trend. And something that I've been waiting for all year long was just more Luna content. And in fact, the wait was worth it. Check this out. Oh, hold on. That, that's, the wrong, that's the wrong video. Play the other one. Twice made a summertime return with alcohol free. And you know what? It wouldn't be twice if they came back again and again. They released The Feels, Scientist. There has been no stopping twice for a while. And in fact, to capitalize on the moment, Brave Entertainment was working on Brave Girls' first comeback in years. Now, finally, with people paying attention, this was the time to strike. And they said they wanted to be the new summer queens of K-pop. Did they achieve it with Chima Param? <laughs> On to July, we were hit in the face with some bad news. Hito and Momo reportedly broke up. And of course, we couldn't go through another year in K-pop without some cringe. That being NCT Hollywood. SM Entertainment wants to create a subgroup of NCT called NCT Hollywood through an audition show and process, creating a Hollywood version of NCT to promote in America. And to answer the question, yes, they're going to look like Americans. And actually, oh, this is just in. I, I think we have the first member confirmed for NCT Hollywood. Like butter, pull you in like no other. Active musician, the talented siblings of K-pop released a collaboration with IU, and of course, that's that's just magic right there. And Taeyeon returned to ruin your diet by saying in her new release, Weekend. Moving on to August, we kind of had a heartwarming moment when Hang Chan got to interview Ryan Reynolds and they basically just fanboyed over each other for 10 minutes while trying to promote a movie. We finally meet! We finally met. <laughs> and it's such an honor and a privilege to talk to you. This Me? is kind of crazy. Yes, because I like I think you're amazing. I think you I think, think all the stray kids are amazing. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you. And love would be in the air yet again as dating news broke that Red Velvet's Joy and solo R&B singer Crush have been dating. Lucas kind of had his own bra moment with his interaction with fans that made him step back from promotions with NCT and Wavy. Oh yeah, Super M, you can't forget about Super M, even though I just did. But what I will remember August for the most is when Red Velvet returned, when they came back with Queendom. But what made this special is, yes, it was like two years since their last release. And Queendom, I think that's a fitting title for the group. I honestly have Queendom on repeat ever since it was released. La tire tu paparina. Somi continued to be an it girl in Korea by releasing Dum Dum and XOXO. And in September, we got even more crazier news that came out of the blue. It was announced Icon's Bobby had a fiance and a baby on the way. K-pop fans also found out that Luna was in financial trouble, or should I say, Blackberry Creative was in financial trouble, uh, unable to pay some of their bills. 
everything is fine. I'm not gonna let them suffer. I'm just transferring my life savings as we speak. BTS continued to be the saving grace of not only K-pop but the world as they perform for the UN. NCT 127 had the most questionable song of the year. <laughs> People either hated it or loved it. There was no in between. I don't know if you're the same way, but I just like, my brain just stops for a second every time NCT releases a new song because it's always so different. But September, September was also the month another Blackpink member would have their solo. Lisa dropped La Lisa and a little later, money. But I want to talk about money more importantly because many people thought that was the actual soundtrack for the hit Netflix show that also took over that month, Squid Game. You would see TikToks, you would see mashups, you would see compilations just using money as the soundtrack and to be honest, it fits really well. On to the spooky time of the year in October. Girls Planet 999 wrapped up and we got our finalists and group members for the new girl group Kepler. However, their debut was supposed to be this year and it got postponed for next year. On to November. I mean, how would you ask mm, someone out on a date? You know, like casually mention it or spending a lot of money on a billboard outside of the company where that person works. That's exactly what this Filipino social media influencer did. He put this billboard outside of YG Entertainment and he spent $30,000 doing it, just asking her out to dinner. Did it work? Of course not. <laughs> this is not really K-pop, but this actually shows that things are getting better and, and it's looking like a brighter future. A music festival concert, Head in the Clouds, was announced and it went off without a hitch, featuring Asian artists from all over the world. And while it wasn't really a K-pop concert, K-pop couldn't really be denied here. In between performances, they played some Stacy, and let's say everybody knew exactly what to do. Itzy's Yeji almost got in trouble with the fire department, as she almost set Itzy's dorm on fire by trying to melt some chocolate in the microwave. Listen, we've all been there. <laughs> While most people will be preparing for Thanksgiving with uh, turkey, K-pop fans were waiting to see Espa as they were introduced to be a part of the Macy Thanksgiving Day Parade. On to November and December, Head in the Clouds was just the start of it, but this time a K-pop act would prove concerts are back baby tonight is night two of bts at sofi stadium that's right the south korean pop group is taking over southern california with their permission to dance tour bts had a massive four days performing at the sofi stadium in los angeles california selling over 200,000 tickets and more and more groups are following in the same footsteps by announcing their own tours one of which is twice and yes i have to flex on you guys i have vip to see twice. I am gonna be like six feet away from them. It's, it, uh, you know what? It hasn't hit me yet. I'll let you know when someone carries me out of the stadium when I'm passed out and need medical attention. In a big moment, and they're kind of late to the party, BTS opened up their own individual Instagram accounts. And V had a <laughs> hilarious moment. Fans noticed V started following Blackpink's Jennie on Instagram, but quickly he said it was an accident because as you know, profiles can get recommended to you and he probably hit it on accident. But then he later said Instagram is a scary app. <laughs> and the hottest group in K-pop right now just debuted this month. We're talking about IVE. Members from Eyes One, Hwan Young, and Yujin, and the straight fire song 11, I've, I would say, is this year's rookie of the year. But not to overshadow other Eyes One members, like Unbi, who had her solo debut, Yuri, who had her solo debut. Listen, the K pop Avengers are Eyes One members, and now let's take a moment of silence and pay our respects to groups who disband this year, mainly Eyes One and G Friend. However, they're not exactly done yet. Members from G-Friend went on to create a new group called Vivis, with the debut expected soon. Now, I really think the song Dreams Come True by Espa wraps up this year quite well. Yeah. 
The song itself was sung by SES, a first-generation girl group from the same company as ESPA, SM Entertainment. Poa, who helped SM Entertainment break into Japan, produced the ESPA version of the song. I think 2021 in K-pop really feels like a bridge to the next generation. Never before have we seen so many different rookie groups in K-pop find their own success. As we see this shift from the third to the fourth and kind of like the fifth generation of K-pop now, the timing is perfect as K-pop as a music finally has respect in the West. K-pop has definitely reached that next... Um... That next... 